All right, so this is part two of uh, Water is the Medium of Life. And so we're gonna continue along with that uh, um, theme. Uh, crucial freshwater uh, resources, really four of them. Uh, so I want you, these are, these are definitions you should know. Uh, one is groundwater. Uh, that's uh, uh, water that infiltrates, gets between the little soil particles and rocks. And obviously it's in the ground. Uh, zone of saturation. Uh, that's the, the areas that basically fill up. Uh, saturate means to completely cover. And so there are areas that get saturated and kind of can hold water. Um, the water table, uh, the top of the groundwater zone. Um, okay, so there might be an area where it's all saturated and then there may be some areas above that uh, uh, where, where the water is. And so uh, in the summertime that will drop uh, and in other times it will ri uh, rise. Uh, good examples are local deserts. Um, the uh, water table in the desert is really, really low uh, because of evaporation and because there's very little water. Uh, the water table uh, tends to be pretty deep and some of the trees that are out there have adapted like uh, Palo Verdes um, and Mesquite are two of the big trees that are out there. Uh, and to be a big tree, you need a lot of water. So uh, they could have up to a 200 foot taproot uh, uh, that shoots down to, to try to, to tap into that water table. And then aquifers, these are large areas that hold flowing water. And uh, these are uh, extremely important for some of our uh, water needs as, as humans. So I want you to know those four terms, those are good definitions for you to know. Okay, so uh, aquifer depletion in the US, uh, one of the largest aquifers on the planet. Uh, uh, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna butcher the name, so uh, Ogal Lala, I think. Uh, you know, uh, it, it's, it's kind of a strange word, uh, but supplies a third of the groundwater in the US. Um, I don't know where you live. I mean, uh, in our area, uh, everybody's water sources come from different areas. Uh, I live in San Dimas and we actually, some of our water comes from San Dimas uh, groundwater. Uh, some of the local waters have been contaminated, so they had to be shut down. Um, but anyway, so this is one of the biggest uh, uh, aquifers, uh, uh, a third of it. Uh, uh, for the U.S. kind of kind of sits here. You can see in the picture um, kind of here in the middle of the U.S. And we're pumping it 10 to 40 times faster than it can um, recharge. And recharge we mean when it rains and fills back up. Uh, so what I was going to tell you uh, is we're screwed. Uh, if we continue to use the water the way we're using it, uh, that aquifer will dry up and that source of water for people will be gone or at least highly diminished. And you think about it, it supplies one third of the groundwater in the US. Um, yeah, you're all going to die. I told you I was gonna say it. Uh, so we, we have to think about the way we use water. Um, okay, so surface water, um, the fresh water from rain, melted snow, uh, you know, that's some of the stuff we rely on here in, in, in California. Uh, annually about 34% of uh, the world's reliable surface runoff is used. Uh, again, it varies depending on how much rain we got. 70% uh, go to uh, raising crops, 20% to industry, and only 10% are really used for cities for drinking and cooking and, 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 and our household needs. Uh, so a lot of that goes to crops and, uh, and uh, uh, ranch livestock. All right, and then I mentioned this in the last video, but uh, uh, water is not distributed um, evenly on the planet. Uh, Canada with very few people have 20% of the liquid water, China, with one of the bigger populations, has a lower percentage. So that leads us to one of our principles, which is water is a key or limiting factor in the occurrence and distribution of organisms and ecosystems in soil, air, and water. So what you find is our distribution of organisms on the planet, most of them actually live near water. Uh, if you think about uh, uh, where we live in the United States, um, we tend to, people tend to live on the coasts. Uh, they live around the Great Lakes uh, and they live along the, the Colorado and Mississippi uh, rivers. Uh, uh, so we really are tied into uh, waterways. Um, 
The Colophona River Project is one that um, uh, Miller and Spoolman talk about. Uh, and that is a local one for us. Um, so it's in the Southwest here. So I do want to talk about it. It provides water for seven different states, the Colorado. And uh, the water mostly comes from the Rocky Mountain melt. Uh, so if we have lots of snow in the Rocky Mountains, uh, we have a strong source of water. If we don't, then we got issues. Uh, for uh, about 40 million people, one in eight people in the United States are using water from the Colorado River. Uh, and historically, 80% of that is being used uh, uh, for crops and, and livestock. So even a little bit higher than, than maybe the, uh, um, the world average. And we're going to talk about the river project and we're going to talk about our water systems. We have three major water um, uh, projects here in California. We'll talk about those in a later lecture. Okay, and so what rivers actually do is transport water, substrates, and nutrients. I've shortened this one from inside the book, uh, but rivers transport water, substrates, and nutrients. So water we're talking about, substrates would be things like rocks and, you know, wood, living things and even, and then the nutrients, um, you know, would be um, chemicals and, and, and things that are, you know, important, uh, vitamins, minerals and stuff for, for plants and animals, but then also um, our uh, agricultural pest uh, herbicides, uh, but also our fertilizers, which we talked about with the, uh, the dead zone. And so we'll stop the share and we will stop the recording.